2019 at the Art Center in Corvallis. This exhibit comes around every year, but is selected every year by a different juror. This time around, it was Sandy McGee from the Umqua Valley Arts Association, an artist herself and an excellent curator. My name is Hester Kuke. I'm the curator at the Art Center and the Exhibition Committee and myself installed this exhibit. The exhibit is on view through August 9th and um, we will be showing you a couple of select pieces, but if you want to see everything, you should come by. We are open Tuesday through Saturday from noon to five. We are free, but we gladly accept donations. has exhibited at the Art Center not for the first time. She, a couple of years ago, exhibited a show about archetypes. Archetypes is something that she is very much interested in. Those symbols that we all know exactly what they are about. And here in a painting called Flying Home, although the title wouldn't say so, I think the main character really is the unicorn. When I talked with her, she said, I wanted to do something with the unicorn, such a platitude, and make it a cranky unicorn, make it an older, sort of grunt muchin of a unicorn. And I thought that was a very fun and interesting concept. And Angela is giving you here all kinds of opportunities for storytelling. This is a semi-realistic painting. Um, we have no unicorns after all. And if we look at the bird, she didn't stick with one particular style. So maybe flying home means I'm flying home to my realm of style. But um, uh, this, this cranky unicorn was what attracted me to this particular uh, painting. I have no idea what this lady is doing there. And I could think of all kinds of different things. Does she have a crown or is it just a party hat? Um, plenty of opportunity here. The other little tidbit is this painting was chosen for the late summer Corvallis Art Walk a poster. So if you see this around, you know where it's coming from. Ceramics can be just your daily plates that you eat your breakfast from, but it can also pertain to sculpture. And here we have a piece by Suzanne Getz from Corvallis. And it's a piece that, again, has a little bit of storytelling in it. It seems a pretty straightforward piece of uh, a woman shading her eyes from uh, the sun. But in her hand, she has a little creature. And that is where that storytelling comes in. Uh, not only that, it, it, that storytelling gives you an opportunity to give your own interpretations to this, but not only that, this is a, a piece that delivers compositions from each side that are really interesting. If we look from the back or we look from the side, and of course the front, they're all interesting. They give us a totally different view of what this person is or could be. And then, of course, we have the little creature in there. There's a lot going on here in the front, while it's very simple here in the back. But it's very balanced. To make such a piece, you really have to think ahead. To create such a, a stylized, yet realistic, sculpture, you really have to, to 
to make choices that are finite, that are definite, as opposed to improvising. Um, I think that is what makes this piece such a strong piece and gives us an emotional connection. looking at the first one, Marilyn Joyce. Her piece is called First Shadows on the Playa. Uh, artists must be familiar with the Playa residencies in Eastern Oregon, and um, this is where this piece started. It's so subtle and so simple, but very deceptively so. Um, even the pigment of the playa is worked in here. There are several layers of paper, some of them prepared with beeswax, others not. Some of them colored, others not. And it gives that quietness that the playa would be, since it is basically a desert with nothing growing. Um, it's very location-based. As I mentioned, there is um, sediment of the playa in here that Marilyn dried and then reconstituted to be able to keep creating uh, a body of work along these lines. Uh, here we are by work of Marie Renee Johnson from Corvallis. Her work is about nature and ecology. In this work, she is talking about these mountain goats that just know where the flowers are that is going to be his dessert. How all these elements in nature balances out um, to depict something as interesting as that how do they know where those flowers are? She has taken this very simple way of, of creating a sweet looking mountain goat, which in itself I think is a feat, and that this halo of flowers. It is very simple technique, pen and ink on paper, but the amount of white gray and black that she has in there, the different shades, is so accomplished, it's so balanced out, so well done. The deepness of the black in the night sky couldn't be any deeper, while the whiteness of the moon really sparks. Another thing that I want to talk about with this work is presentation. Here we have a simple black and white painting or drawing in a colored mat. Generally, I think colored mats are not a great idea, but here it just works perfectly. Marie Lene is one of the prize winners uh, that Sandy McGee allocated an award to specifically because of those things I mentioned. The balance, the black, the simple technique with a maximum effect. Monty Shelton from Salem usually paints really large paintings with trees and logs, etc. in it. But this time around, we see the fairly straightforward backyard view. It is an ink on paper with colored pencil drawing and um, it's, it's so basic, it's so straightforward that it gets its value there. You know, it elevates a not particularly beautiful, picturesque view. But she managed to see the beauty in this old fence. What connects her work with her large, this particular work with her larger body of work is the treatment of this fence. 
I entirely recognize how she paints all those vibrant tree trunks in her large paintings, just as she does this fence here. Um, it's one of the smaller pieces in the show, and uh, we selected it to let you know size doesn't always matter. get the opportunity to show jewelry. So we were very pleased to see that Sandy McGee selected work by Caroline Veen uh, from Eugene. She here has a necklace pendant and I'm putting this paper behind it so you can see what the pendant really is. The stand almost makes it look like a crucifix with something on it, but that is uh, a deception. It is a, um, a pendant on a necklace. It is made from repurposed steel, which makes it so contemporary to have jewelry from discarded material. It is rusty. It is industrial looking, so it really fits in our time of today. And even the silver looks black. Here we have some silver that is oxidized. So no shiny parts here. No glam, no glitter. Uh, even the necklace is um, rubber. The Around Oregon Annual is selected blind which means that the juror does not know, does not have a list of names of artists. So in theory, he or she can pick without any prejudice. I'm saying this because I'm doing a little bit of shameless self-promotion and showing you one of my pieces that got in. It's called Together, and it's, um, a piece made out of mostly found materials and um, has been put together totally unplanned, very intuitive. We talked about other ex um, sculptures that were made very planned. This is a trying to put things together and see if they fit. The technique largely is gravity. This is not attached. The bottom part is a leftover from a children's sculpture that was living in my yard for a long time. The uh, porcelain tubes were made by Amanda Salov. The block is just a block. The wire is just a wire. When I make these pieces, when I make this body of work, I really think of that fragility of the randomness, how easy it is to disrupt things. Nothing much needs to happen of this or this piece is entirely destroyed. It's kind of scary, um, but you know, kind of exciting too. Snell from Portland, but previously Corvallis, went from a straightforward quilter to a fiber artist who paints with quilting techniques. Here behind me is a piece called Degeneration, and it is about slowly falling apart of things. Believe it or not, the inspiration for this piece was a small rivet in the steel bridge in Portland rusting away. The interesting part, or the, one of the many interesting parts of this uh, piece is not only that she took something this big and made it that big, also the color painting that she did and the building up instead of the falling apart. The stitching 
uh, that we see in quilts quite often is a particular pattern, and here it's an entirely free pattern. I would love to see her do it. It's very subtly done because she did not pick one color of thread, but a multitude, and sometimes the color disappears in the background of the fiber, and sometimes it contrasts or has a slightly darker shade. So it really gets that painterly effect. And then um, what such intense quilting does, it creates a lot of mountains and valleys, so to speak. A lot of shadow play gets into this piece. I invite you to take a close look at it. It is hanging in such a way that you will have to. You can't really see it from far away. But this time, a close-up um, is worth your while and very interesting. So this was a little bit of the exhibit around Oregon Annual and a little bit of what we do here at the Art Center. Come and visit us if you want to see the rest of the exhibit or do any of the other things that we do. Check out our website, www.theartcenter.net. Hope to see you soon.